All right, everyone, this is uh, Mr. Davies from the other AP Physics 1 class. Uh, I'm going to hear to help you uh, get through this activity for today. So you should have a piece of paper that looks similar to what you see on the screen. Uh, so basically what I'm going to ask you to do is just to kind of fill out the rest of this right here, the rest of the, the boxes. So and then I'll come back and we'll uh, kind of guide you through the rest of the uh, the activity for today. Uh, this is delta x, right? And hopefully you know what that delta means. Delta means change in. And it, uh, x is just another letter that we use for position. So position is the same thing as saying x in physics. So a delta x would be a change in position. So you can see how there's a bracket here that says delta x, what is the change in position between this one and this one? So uh, in order to do a delta x, we have to take the uh, second x and minus the first one. So in this case, it would be 0 0.5 uh, minus 0. When of course, that would give you 0 0.5. Okay, And then you would just uh, keep on doing that. Keep on doing that as, as you get down. I'm going to go ahead and do one more so we can do something here in just a sec. Uh, actually, no, I don't have to. So the delta x then is a change in position so it's how far this particular dog traveled in uh, a certain amount of time and that time is delta t you can do again delta t would be t2 minus t1 and if we take a look at the t's here we're talking about 1 minus 0 so that would just be you know, 1 second right there and I'm not going to write the units in just right now Maybe I'll write them up here, so that should be in seconds. And then this would be in meters. Now, velocity uh, is given by an equation that hopefully you might already know, and that is the change in the position over the change in time. So if you take 0 0.5 and divide it by 1, you would get 0 0.5. Now, what would be the units for velocity? Well, it's meters on top and seconds on bottom, so you would get a meter per second. So why don't you take a couple minutes and uh, fill out the rest of this uh, graph, or the, the table here, with all of your values. Now keep in mind, it's always the second one minus the first one. So the ones down here uh, might throw you for a loop if you're not careful. So just kind of giving you a little heads up there. Now when you get done with filling out all of the table, then uh, you're going to take that information and go on to your first graph. Okay, and that first graph is a position versus time graph. So basically, all you're doing is plotting what's in that this column right here, your second column here, all the position data. You're going to take all of that, and you're going to plot it here versus time. Notice how there's no, nothing on the legend, nothing here or here. You got to figure out how to do that. Okay, and then once you're through with that, then you're going to plot the second one, which is velocity versus time. So in this case, you're not plotting this first column. Okay, That was the first one. You're going to plot what you get down here in this last column for velocity. Now, velocity is going to be a little bit of a kind of a tricky thing whenever you plot it, because notice how this velocity is kind of in between two times, 0 and 0.5. So you would plot it in between 0 and 0.5. That's where you'd put your dot on your graph. If this were 0 and this were 0.5, then you would put your dot right there in the middle. That's how you would do that, because it's a velocity that we know in between two particular times. So that's just kind of a uh, uh, quick overview of what you're going to be doing. I'm going to have the substitute pause the video now, and when everyone is through, I'll give you about five minutes to, to well, I'll give you a little more than that, maybe uh, seven or eight minutes to finish up the table and your graphs uh, and then the substitute will unpause the video and we'll move on. So go ahead and pause the video and take care of that first activity. Okay, welcome back. So um, realize I told you something a little bit incorrect. Uh, maybe you figured it out. I was telling you about plotting the time. Uh, it wouldn't be between 0 and 0.5, it would be between 0 and 1. I, I can't remember if I told you that one correct or not. So hopefully you may have figured it out, and if not, then 
uh, we'll be going through this together. So you can see all I filled out the rest of this table. Hopefully your numbers look very similar to mine. You notice that the delta t, the time in between all of our time intervals, is just one all the way down, which makes our life pretty easy when it comes to calculating velocity, because that means our delta t down here is always going to be one. That's not always going to be the case, but in this uh, particular activity it is. So that means our velocities have the same numerical value as our just uh, change in position, but notice that the unit would be different. So it's not really the same thing. It's just giving us the same numerical value. So if we were to go through and plot this, so here's uh, my setup for the plot. We can see that position goes up by half a meter up until four seconds. So at four seconds, we are at, let's see, we're at four seconds, we're at two meters. Okay, that means at one second we were at half a meter, at two seconds we were at a meter, at three seconds we are at one and a half meter. Okay, and then uh, something happens. Something happens to the dog and all of a sudden it starts to go backwards. Now how do we know it's going to go backwards? Well, if we're at two meters for four seconds and we go to five seconds, now all of a sudden we're only at a meter. And, and that's a meter away from zero. So at five seconds we're at a meter, so we're sitting right here. So he had to have turned around because now he's heading back towards where he started. Now he's only one meter away from where he started. Uh, and then it goes back to zero at six seconds. And then at seven seconds, he's all the way down here to negative one. So what does that negative one mean? Negative one. Okay, if we're talking about position, then that means he must have started some place, say, let's see if I can get it. So he must have started, uh, you know, maybe right here. He went all the way over here two meters, but then decided to go all the way back and ends up one meter away from where he started, but behind where he started. So we know it's behind because that's where the negative comes from. He ends up in the negative area or back behind where he first started. So if we connect the, the dots here, and we're not really connecting dots, we're drawing a best fit line, it just happens to be very straight, then we see that we have a very linear line going up, and then right here something happens, he turns around, and then he goes back, uh, and he goes back much quicker. Now, how do we know he's going back quicker? Well, we can take a look at our velocities. Okay, our velocities have a bigger value. They're negative, and we'll talk about what that means here in a second. Um, but we have a uh, bigger value. It's 1 rather than 0.5. So that's, this is what our, our position versus time graph looks like for the dog. Now, if we go over to our velocity versus time graph, things are going to look a little bit different. Uh, let's take a look at what we have for velocity back at our table. So it's, velocity is the same. It's 0 0.5, 0 0.5, 0 0.5, and that goes between, the first one is between 0 and 1. So between 0 and 1 it's at 0.5. It would be right here. Between 1 and 2 it's at 0 0.5, so that would be right here. Okay, between 2 and 3 it's at 0.5, so that would be right here. Okay. Uh, and then, let's see, where do we we keep going? So we, we have, what, four of those. So, there we go. Now, and then all of a sudden it changes, right? Now it's at a, this negative one for the rest of the time. So between four and five, it's at a negative one down here. Between five and six, it's at a negative one. Between six and seven, it's at a negative one. So now we have something that is straight. Right? We have straight here, we have straight here, and somehow in order to get from here to here we had to do that. Okay, now what does that mean? Well, we'll, we'll eventually talk about that one. That one's not going to be today. That's going to be a little bit uh, further on in the week. But we're, we're seeing that right here and right here that it's the same speed, it's the same velocity. But something happens and we end up getting a negative velocity. Well, the negative velocity comes from the idea that, oh, what happened right here? We got the, the negative velocity when this thing started. We already said that he turned around. That's not a great color for that. So we said at that point the dog turned. He turned around, and he started going the opposite direction. 
So between 4 and 5 is when we get this negative velocity, right? Between 4 and 5 it changes over to a negative velocity. So that matches up with that point right there, right? This point where it changes from positive to negative happens right there. So there's a difference between being in a negative position, right, which is ending further back from where you started, and being in a negative velocity. This just means that you're traveling in the opposite direction. You're traveling in the direction that you uh, were not at the very beginning. So here, let's say this one was the dog going to the right, and then all of a sudden he turned around and now he's going to the left. Okay. Well, up here, it doesn't really matter about right and left, other than the fact is of where you end it. If you started here, and you went on the right side of that point, then that is going to be considered positive position. So that's the, what he did at the very beginning, positive position. But he turned around, and he started going back. And as soon as he turned around, he started getting negative velocity, or he had negative velocity. But it wasn't until right here on this graph that he passed where he started, and ended up in a negative position. So we're going through this very, very quickly. So uh, one of the easiest ways to try to look at this is on one of the other sheets that, that you should have, or maybe the substitute's passing out right now. And it's this little graphic right here. We call it Running Man. And it's basically looking at whether something is positive or negative position or positive or negative velocity. So right here in this first quadrant, Okay, we have a positive position and a positive velocity. So positive position means that he's on the right side of zero and he's moving to the right. We'll put a little wind gust behind him. Right? And this guy is running to the right. So what would that look like if he was in negative position and positive velocity? Well, negative position just means he's on the opposite side of zero. So he's sitting over here in this area right there. The problem is, is that he still has a positive velocity. So what does that positive velocity mean? Well, it means that he's still traveling in the same direction that he was uh, over here in the first quadrant. He just happens to be on the opposite side of zero. So if we draw him in, you can see that he's still facing in the same direction. He's just uh, now on the opposite side of zero. So he's still running to the right, but now he's further away from where the other guy started, uh, to the left of the origin or the starting position. So if we come down here then, then this would be a place where you have positive position, but negative velocity. A positive position, but negative velocity. So positive position puts him where? On the left side or right side of zero? Well, that'd be put him on the right side of zero. It's the same as this guy up here. So putting him on the right side of zero, but if it's a negative velocity, then that, what does that mean about his direction of movement? Uh, he's got to be traveling in the opposite direction. So he may be sitting over here in positive position, but now he is traveling in the opposite direction. Now he's traveling to the left. So I'm going to leave this last one up to you and see if you can figure this out. This would be a negative position with a negative velocity. And I want to see if you can figure that one out. Okay. I hope you. Uh, don't have too many questions about positive and negative position versus positive and negative velocity. If you do, uh, you can I'm more than welcome to ask anyone. Uh, take a look back at the, uh, the uh, data table as well as the graph and see if you can figure out what point goes with what point. I know there's lots of scribblings here. I'll make this video available in case you want to watch it again uh, and take a look back at any other point. All right.